celebrating 40 years of pride in toronto this is amazing happy pride everybody and i am so excited for the mayor of toronto john tory to join deepa and i for a fun chat about about pride mayor john tory how are you happy pride looking very festive i'm good Maury. now yeah I, well i'm festive i've got my pride tie i've got my uh, pride mask here and i'm indeed now Maury, i know you're not really excited to talk to me but you you fake that very well <laughs> but uh, i'm excited about pride even though this year's is going to be more virtual i've already done in fact my first couple of pride events uh, virtually and you know it's not quite the same but uh we're learning to live with it for a second and final year because next year we're back to the real thing i love that you are so in love with helping out pride you love everything to do with pride you're always there to help out Pride. And I think that is so amazing. It warms my heart. And it also is what in Toronto speaks more to the question of uh, inclusivity than Pride. I mean, Pride speaks to who we are. And there's a lot of challenges with that right now in terms of, you know, all the things that we're going through. So I, I love Pride. I mean, to me, it's just fun. Why is it so important to celebrate Pride in Toronto on such a large scale? Well, you see, I think right now, it, first of all, it's about getting us back into a positive mindset. And I think pride, whether virtual or real, does that. I mean, people think positively when they're participating in pride because it's fun and because it's inclusive. But I think as well, there are so many threats out there right now. I mean, I've been talking a lot about them in recent days, unfortunately. I mean, there's there's anti, you know, L to, to us LGBTQ, uh, you know, we saw violence taking place. We've seen anti-Asian, uh, you know, uh, behavior. We've seen anti black uh, racism continue. We've seen, I mean, I'm sorry to give this list, but it's just the truth. We've seen anti-Semitism. We've seen, uh, you know, certainly Islamophobia in the coming days with some terrible tragedies. And we've seen some real trials with regard to, you know, our histories with our indigenous peoples. And so I think we need pride. We've always needed pride because it sends that message of inclusivity and it sends that kind of positive message, notwithstanding that there's an advocacy and protest element still, which is fine. That's good. But it sends a positive message about how we can be inclusive, we can act inclusive, we can have fun while being inclusive. You know, are you sitting there thinking about how you can maybe quote one up yourself next year in terms as, of celebrations? Are you constantly finding things to add to the list? So you ask me, and you know, if you want to say, well, what's on your mind right now? I will tell you, Deepa, in all honesty, and Maury will know this is true. Squirt guns are on my mind. <laughs> It's fine to sit here. It's fine to sit here and talk to you on a Zoom call and to do this very nice virtual discussion about pride and all the things that are good about it. I'm thinking to myself, it's the one time of year. It's the one time of year where, yes, I get squirted and that's fine. That's good, too. People should have their chance to kind of take it out on a politician a little bit. But I get the chance to return fire. Normally, when I'm in a press conference and they're asking me questions I don't like, I, I just have to sort of suck it up and deal with it. But yeah. in Pride, I get to bring my own water cannon-sized squirt guns and deal with <laughs> anybody I want. And it is deemed to be in the spirit of the occasion. If I had to answer the question, I was thinking, you shirtless, finally. But we, there, there is a certain point that you go beyond that scares small children. You know, we want Pride to be for families. And the notion of me being shirtless uh, at Pride would be uh, scary for small children. So we probably rule that out. I shouldn't say this. Uh, my my uh, team here at the office will be most disheartened to hear me say this. But Maury, to be honest, I'd consider ashless chaps before I'd consider shirtless. But having said all that, neither one are being committed to. Uh, you know, you have to act in a certain way if you're the mayor. And even having the squirt gun and unloading it on people like you uh, is, uh, you know, on the border of of that kind of behavior that people might criticize me for but i'll take that under advisement but all joking aside and it is all fun what does pride mean to you and does it change every year oh it, it definitely changes every year and you know what it changes in part because of i'll call it the political climate because you know every year it's taking place within a different environment with different issues and different events that have happened you know that have either been very tragic or very happy in terms of you know some favorable court case or some bad a tragedy that's taking place. But in the end, it's just a huge celebration of sort of who we are and how far we've come. Obviously, thank you for everything that you've done for the city and for Pride, because I think that Toronto is in the forefront of a lot of the different celebrations. So every year and this year in particular, what do you want everybody in Toronto to take away from Pride Month? Uh, we're all human beings and that we all are different because everybody's different from one another. I, you know, my wife and I have four children and they're all so different from one another. You wouldn't even think they had the same parents. But, you know, it's those differences that if we can sort of make two and two equal five, you know, makes this city special. And I think the fact that we're still a place where people and people tell me this, people tell me they come here, they choose Toronto, smart people, accomplished people who are benefiting the city because they feel accepted. 
I mean, I have been in a lot of different experiences in my life, but there is nothing. And I say this to people who've been out to watch the parade, but being in it, being in it, what you get to do is you not only get to see the people that are in the parade with you, but you see like a million people. And when you look at who the people are, you know, it's, it, it's everybody. What stands out the most for you in the pride parade? Is there one moment, one float, one thing that stands out most for you at pride? For me, it's always, and I get so emotional every time I see it. I just burst out into tears every time I see the P flag group walking in the parade, because that to me is the absolute coolest group of people is the P flags. But I must confess, mine is a, a little more just on the fun side of some of the some of the costumes. If you want to talk about people who are shirtless and assless chaps and all the rest, I mean, it, 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 you know, the people go to a lot of trouble to wear as little as possible, but to <laughs> sort of look good doing so. And um, you know, it, it, it's just to me, it's a kind of a you know, uh, what, what do they talk about? You know, uh, loosening up your hair and just having a good time. And I just noticed that the sort of the costumes and, uh, but there are a lot of moving things about it too, including the P-Fly group. What is your, we'll go around the room here, Deepa, myself and you, what is your favorite pride anthem? Purely because we also sang this the other day together, born this way by Lady Gaga. We were so atrocious, <laughs> but I would say it's at the top of my list. Hey, for me, I would for me, say, it's, oh, sorry, sorry Marty, go ahead. I was going to say, because in, 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 I was going to say, mine is Diana Ross, come, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I want the world to know. <laughs> I would have said born this way, but I will say only because I've now heard her perform it twice at Pride related functions, uh, Rise Up, uh, Lauren, Lauren Segato. I mean, I, you know, to me, it's not per se a Pride anthem, but it's become one just because she performs it at. <laughs> I mean, she's such a fixture at those events and she performs it at pride events. So I've come to see it as one. And I think given her iconic stature in the community, it would be seen as such as well. So those are three, uh, three good ones. To, I was uh, going to say, because, into. because of your age, I thought you would have said Judy Garland somewhere over the rainbow. Oh my God. <laughs> is that, is that an ageist uh, comment? He's only there, 25. <laughs> I don't think he knows the song. <laughs> no. A, y a young pup like him. There's a lot of things he doesn't know, uh, Deepa. You know, I won't say that about you, but with him, there's a lot of things he doesn't know, but uh, that's okay. We'll continue to work with him. And, uh, you know, he, he's, he means well. He means very well. Love your pride. Share your pride. Kiss your pride. Kiss 92.5.